on special assignment, we join the rebels in Africa's deepest jungles, fighting a passionate war for control of the Democratic Republic of Congo, Africa's second biggest country, a devastated land where peace seems far away. says he's 14 years old. He's been a soldier for two years, first fighting to keep President Laurent Kabila in power, now to topple him. Gentil is a rebel. Gentil will probably never go to school again. His war has been called Africa's first world war. Three rebel groups are fighting the government in Kinshasa. Five neighboring states are directly involved in the conflict. Seven more are affected. It's a war that's difficult to understand. Up to now, all efforts to bring peace to Congo have failed. Negotiations continue, but a peaceful solution seems far off. Calls have been made for South African mediation and an international peace force that will include South African troops. Even if Gentil survives the war, he would have lost a childhood deep in the jungles of Central Africa. In October this year, the special assignment team entered Congo via neighboring Uganda. This is hostile territory with virtually no infrastructure or amenities. We spent time with two of the rebel groups, both backed by Uganda. They are the Movement for the Liberation of Congo and the Congolese Rally for Democracy Liberation Movement. A third rebel group is backed by Rwanda. Kabila has held on to power with the help of Angolan, Zimbabwean and Namibian troops. The three main rebel groups now control roughly half the country. Our journey starts in the eastern part of Congo, in Bunya, headquarters of the Congolese Rally for Democracy Movement, or RCDML. Professor Wamba Diawamba, once an academic at Tanzania's University of Dar es Salaam, is now the rebel leader. I've been in situations where uh, you come out and then you say to yourself, you, you could have died actually. You know. If uh, death does meet us somewhere, well, you know, that's too bad. But uh, at least if we have made some contribution, mm, that is enough satisfaction to keep going and losing the luxury, the, uh, the, 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 the no worry situation. Ugandan instructors are training Wamba's rebel troops. The root of the war in Congo can be traced back to the genocide in Rwanda in 1994. As the Rwandan Patriotic Front took power, the genocidal forces fled into eastern Congo and found refuge under former dictator Mobuto Sese Seko. In 1997, Rwanda and Uganda used Laurent Kabila to overthrow Mobuto. Kabila became president, but failed to drive the genocidaire from his territory. It was then that they launched a new rebellion against Kabila. But before long, the rebel movement split. Wamba's troops are currently not involved in military battles with government forces. Wamba insists that he will follow the diplomatic and political route to power in Kinshasa. Even if it were possible, if we get to Kinshasa, we, we still have to sit down, discuss, agree on some, we can call it some legitimate or some subjective elements of legitimacy so that nobody will feel sufficiently rejected to go to the bush and start another war. With our visit to Bunya, deep tensions were underlying the superficial calm. 
Soon after our departure, some of Wamba's deputies tried to overthrow him. They were impatient with his lack of military action. Wamba is now clinging to power, with Uganda trying to smooth over the differences in the group. And so you have different uh, contacts, uh, an attempt to bring some kind of unified position within uh, each you know, rebellion group, like ours, where we have had some difficulties. We are trying to solve those. But also the various groups to come to some unity uh, and, and, and make sure that the main enemy for the moment is the uh, Kabila regime. From Bunya, we went to Badulite, headquarters of the Movement for the Liberation of Congo, or MLC. The MLC controls the vast northern Equateur province. MLC chairman Jean-Pierre Bemba is no ordinary rebel leader. He's one of the wealthiest businessmen in Congo and has huge business interests in Belgium. The leadership corps consists of a group of young Congolese, all wealthy European businessmen in their own right. They resemble international playboys rather than rebels, but they insist that they are serious about their two-year-old struggle. I left all my comfort in Europe and uh, my business was going uh, running very well for that cause, to liberate the people of Congo. I know that I'm taking a soul with other friends a very big risk on my life. Bombardment every day by Kabila, attack from uh, fax soldiers. We can die any time, but that is our choice because we believe that uh, really this time if uh, there are no few leaders we decide to, to give their life and to sacrifice themselves, we'll never get uh, freedom in Congo. Ironically, the MLC headquarters is situated in a town carved out of the dense equatorial jungle by Mobuto. He built Badulite near the village where he was born. Mobuto's exotic jungle palaces are a monument to the man who plundered Congo's wealth. He became one of the wealthiest men in the world and his country one of the poorest. While Congolese starved in poverty, Mobuto built shrines for his family members. It was against the background of these excesses that Uganda decided to back Kabila in toppling Mobuto. Now, Uganda has been accused of using Bemba to take control of Kinshasa. I am not a puppet uh, because I believe that uh, that will not be the solution for Congo tomorrow. Congo should be able to get their own leader chosen by the people of Congo. And um, I think that mistake made by Kabila, we were a puppet. It is true. You know the result. Tomorrow, Congo should be able to have an army to defend its territory, to secure the border, and to secure the people of Congo. Not with a, a foreign army, but for the Congolese people. Bemba took us with him on a visit to Bumba, 300 kilometers south of Badulite. He has emerged as the most popular rebel leader in Congo. This is due to his military victories combined with a diplomatic and political approach. A crew of Russian pilots shuttles Bemba around his territory in his Russian-built Antonov. Bemba spends much of his time mobilizing the Congolese in his territory. Winning the hearts and minds of people, he says, will help him stay in power when he takes Kinshasa. In MLC areas, local authorities choose their own leaders. Children go to school and there's policing. Health services are also provided. 
It is very significant and very important for us. After two years of uh, fighting, that you get still the support of the people. Bemba denies allegations that Ugandan troops are fighting on his front line. He insists that Uganda merely gives training and logistical support. He says his 20,000 rebel troops are all Congolese, like these two battalions at a military pass-out parade in Bumba. Those soldiers, uh, they know that they are not uh, paid, they are volunteer for the war. I wanted to explain them, they are not mercenary, we are rebel, and they need to understand why we should fight, and uh, what is the kind of sacrifice we need to do to be free tomorrow. The kind of sacrifice is the supreme sacrifice, that means the dead. We can meet tomorrow the enemy, we can be killed tomorrow by the enemy. Back in Badulite, the MLC leadership opened the doors to their weapons stores. They say this is where the new troops will get their weapons from. The movement claims to have captured millions of dollars worth of arms and ammunition from Kabila's army, the Force Armée de Congolais, or FAC. Some of the weaponry seems to be brand new or hardly even used. They've been uh, captured uh, from Kabila's army, so we've captured a lot and some are already cleansed and uh, sent back uh, to the units. Now they can see that Kabila is a supplier. We estimate that they could be bought around March, April or May. In the DRC, every trip is a difficult one. Mobutu deliberately saw to it that there'd be virtually no roads. He believed this would prevent any uprising. Mobutu simply jetted from town to town. But in the current war situation, there's a huge risk that any plane may be shot down. Flights are limited to the essential. We waited for weeks for a flight to Lebengi, halfway to the MLC front line of Dongo. From Lebengi, it was another two-day trip by boat to Dongo. borders Congo Brazzaville. It's along this river that some of the fiercest clashes between the MLC and Kabila's forces have taken place. The rebels captured the jungle stronghold three months ago. Here, conditions are extreme. But the MLC says the Dongo front line is crucial. It's one of its two front lines from where a military onslaught against Kinshasa can be launched. Nous mangeons, je crois que c'est ça l'essentiel. À part de, euh, marcher à pied, peut-être dormir à la belle étoile, nous n'avons pas eu une autre difficulté. Despite the harsh jungle conditions, we found many women fighting alongside the men in the first line of defense at Dongo. They treated no differently from their male comrades.
Marie Batokoto is the first woman at Dongo to be trained to use the heavy G2 machine gun. The 20-year-old has been a rebel for two years. She's fought in many battles. In one of these, two men were shot dead next to her in the trench. The rebel troops believe they are capable of immediate military victory. Like her male comrades, Marie has only one goal. We have many of uh, women fighting, but they are very strong, very strong, using machine gun, using uh, uh, support weapon. They are very strong. Don't be surprised that uh, even sometimes they are stronger than a man. The battle for Dongo lasted five days. Right up to the dying moments of the fighting, one of Kabila's soldiers kept firing at the rebels, sowing destruction among them with an anti-aircraft gun. Eventually, the government forces retreated. The rebels found the deadly gunner in a ditch next to his anti-aircraft gun. 17-year-old Mushimi Kabamba. They captured the boy. Now he's one of the most effective fighters in Bemba's army, still manning the same gun. Kabamba était formé par les Coréens pour ça, c'est un spécialiste et tel que vous le voyez, il est jeune mais il connaît bien cette arme mais il la démonte complètement et la remonte complètement et il adore cette arme. At night, many of the rebels relax. They know Kabamba is on his post behind the first line of defense, guarding the skies. He eats and sleeps on his gun, waiting for Kabila's forces day and night. We have a lot of prisoners of war coming from Kabila's side. They are here, they are free. You can make them in our camp. They are completely free, but they refuse to go back. Many prisoners of war undergo what the MLC calls ideology training. Then they join their former enemies, among them dozens of children. Our uh, condition of recruitment is minimum 17 years old. And uh, it's not a secret that Kabila took uh, what he called Kadogo, small children. So what can we do with them? When we took them, take them, put them in the rear, try to give them a new ideology that they are children, if they want to go to school, to school, we send them back to school. Gentil insists that he's as good a soldier as any of his grown-up comrades. <laughs> Do you have any girlfriends yet? I'm going to wash it. 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 The adults deciding Gentile's fate have been talking a lot about peace. Little has been done to secure it. 
Last year, August, the Lusaka ceasefire agreement was signed, but the peace talks have run into difficulties. Kabila rejected former Botswana president Sir Ketumire Masire as organizer of an all-party national dialogue in the Congo. He also refused to guarantee the security of international peacekeepers. The United Nations Security Council approved the deployment of 500 military observers and 5,000 support troops. Si tout le monde veut la paix, madame, nous avons dit que la paix aussi, comme la liberté, n'a pas de prix. Et si on les, si si ils veulent que la paix revienne dans ces pays, même si on les déploie dans la forêt, ce sont des militaires, les Onusiens. First thing, you will need a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, observers. 5,000 is not enough. In that bush you saw there, deploying 5,000 soldiers, is nothing. It is really nothing. So it will not have a, a big effect. But as you see, condition of life in the bush is not easy. We are ready to do it because we have no choice. If we don't do it, Kabila will kill uh, all of us, kill civilians. So that's what we choose, and we know that that is the price that we have to pay. It. So now, for a foreign force, really, are they ready for that? The handful of UN observers who have been deployed in rebel areas don't venture out of big towns. They haven't witnessed any of the battles Marie has fought. They've never been in the, in the front line to observe uh, the ceasefire, no. So I think that uh, it should be realistic. should be realistic. UN can help us by putting more pressure in the parties who doesn't want to implement now, presently, the inter-Congolese dialogue. That is the most important today, the inter-Congolese dialogue. Through the inter-Congolese dialogue, we may find a solution if everybody finds good faith. Otherwise, less Congolese determine themselves. Gentil went back with us to Badulite. He was happy because to him, Badulite is the next stop on the way to Kinshasa. Gentil was not aware of the intricate political decisions his leader has to make. It's believed that Kabila recently offered Bemba the vice presidency of the country in return for a guarantee that he would stay president for two years. He's allegedly also offered other rebel leaders positions in return for the same guarantee. But Bemba insists that the implementation of the Lusaka Accord is the only way to find peace. Let President Massi recall the inter-Congolese dialogue. non arm opposant, arm opposant, civic society, Kabila people. Let's go around the table. Let decide what should be the future in Congo for the transition period with election after a transition period quickly, let implement it. That is the political solution. MLC will continue mobilizing the people, recruiting more soldiers to build this capacity ready to defend the people of Congo, to defend his soldiers. Ready also to dialogue. Ready to find solution for our country. Ready to fight also. What we hope for Congo tomorrow is tomorrow Congo to be unified. Two million people have already died as a result of the war in the DRC. Neighboring countries have been destabilized. The country's huge natural resources are being squandered on weapons. If a lasting political solution is not found soon, Congo may yet pay a much higher price. But time will come when we say, OK, we start the war. We give a chance to the peace. We didn't succeed. Next solution will be the war. Maybe we'll stop again, give another chance to peace. I think so. But you're telling me this could still be going on for the next 50 years? It may be. We don't expect it, but we are ready for that. We are ready for that.
Gentil was 12 years old when he was taken from his family. Now he has very few dreams left. But he does dream of seeing his parents again one day in Kinshasa, if they survive the war. Join us again next week for another special assignment. If you have any comments or suggestions, you can fax them to 011-714-6254 or email us at truth at sabc.co.za.